Our train arrived in Lao Cai, a small city on the Chinese border, early Monday morning. Then, we drove for about one hour up through the paddy covered mountains into Sapa. Sapa is a very beautiful town, nestled in a valley surrounded by some of Vietnam's highest mountains. The tallest, Mount Fansipan, extends over 10,000 feet. Right now we're in Sapa in North Vietnam, where we just arrived on train a couple hours ago at 6 in the morning. It's actually very cold. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I didn't expect it to be this cold. It's about, yeah. uh, probably, it's about 50 degrees or so. Yeah. Apparently we're about to go on a hike and uh, explore the mountains. And explore the mountains we did. We got some spectacular views from the top, and we also got to go to a cultural show at the base of the hill. Next, we continued our hike, now descending deeper into the valley below Sapa. Along the way, we even encountered a few buffalo. And this really cool device, used for pounding things into powder. Then, we arrived at a village that specializes in indigo. Also, on the Sapa leg of the trip, we had a radio reporter embedded in the group, who was doing a story about us. As we continued our journey, we passed a waterfall and crossed a couple scary bridges over treacherous water. They were pretty heavily used, be it cattle or even dogs. The next day, we went to a rice harvesting village, located in a valley about 20 minutes outside Sapa. This valley is pretty remote, so not too many tourists come here, making us prime targets for the local saleswomen. They are very persistent and stayed with us for the entire day, even climbing up the hill with us to the rice paddy, carrying packs with their merchandise. We hiked from one village to another, where we harvested the rice, then had lunch at the village leader's house. The hike up was steep and slippery because it had been raining earlier, but the view from the top was worth it. But now, with the hiking out of the way, it was time to get to work. We had rice to harvest. Here, I tried my hand at harvesting. We had the better paddy, because it was dry. But the one right below us had leeches. <laughs> After the harvest, we descended down the hill, had lunch, then began to walk back to the bus. The saleswomen became more aggressive and demanding. Here they surround one of the SYAers, Mac. But after a dramatic pursuit through the countryside, he was finally able to get away. Soon after that, we boarded the bus and drove onwards. Now we're here at this uh, culmination of vegetable farmers who formed a little co-op here, growing their, growing their wares here in, here in the middle of Vietnam somewhere. Somewhere in the vicinity of Sapa. It 
there's cell phones. <laughs> there are cell phones. There are cell phones here, and the farmers do have cell phones. <laughs> Don't be fooled by their quaintness. <laughs> Unfortunately, our time in Sao Paulo was short, and on Wednesday, we traded in the mountains for water. All was calm on Holland Bay, as our boat sailed easily across the water. The times weren't always so easy. The crash made us realize that these were treacherous waters. But more on that later. We're not there yet. After leaving Sao Paulo, we took the train down to Hanoi. Then, it bus to Halong Bay early in the morning. Along the way, we stopped at this monastery, which trains monks. Also at this monastery, we experienced one of the highlights of the trip. This man right here, a Buddhist monk who, as our director Tai Vong explains, has had a very interesting life. He's 83, as he told you, but uh, in his young life, he uh, joined the uh, army, joined the revolution. He fought against the French at the time, and during the uh, war with the Americans, he went south and fought in the south. He's been wounded uh, many times in his hand, in his legs, and so on. And before he turned into Buddhism, uh, he was a, a, a disabled person, so to speak. But with meditation, it has helped him uh, not only clarify his mind, but his physical body uh, it's uh, regained a lot of the strength. His memory, uh, the math lesson that uh, he took before and so on. So he didn't come uh, to, he left the family at a young age, but didn't come to Buddhism until much later in his life, after the life of uh, the fighter. Listening to his life story was an amazing experience that I won't soon forget. In Buddhism, it is up to you, uh, your, your mind, your spirit. If you want to join an, an order, uh, sure, they will be seen. Back to Halong Bay. This is a common type of boat around these parts. In fact, it is almost identical to ours. On Thursday, we took a cruise and saw some really cool scenery. So watch and enjoy. Part of the way through the cruise, we stopped at a seafood farm and picked up some fish and what the heck is that thing? They come out at one point. Tai Chef explains. By the and these are these are living fossils. They, fossils of these from 500 million years ago oh are virtu are unchanged. They're exactly they look the like, same. They look like they would be so, Do they look like trilobites a little? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're a close relative of trilobites. So our elite team of climbers has just summited the, uh, this island here. Very tall, very steep path. A lot of rugged, uh, a lot of rugged trails. As you can see behind me, the beach that we uh, landed on earlier today, before our climb began, a very long time ago. At least, uh, at least ten, at least ten minutes ago, I'd say we're down there. So, very quick ascent, and we are now enjoying the views of Halong Bay. And now, here's the part I know you've all been waiting for. The boats in Halong Bay are notorious for their recklessness. 
as you can clearly see here. Slamming into other boats is pretty routine for them. Every couple of years though, a tourist boat will go down in these waters and kill many people, so there is a small risk involved. That's why, you, that's why you don't put your hand out and your hands out. It was wrong in the minute. We had a great time on this trip, but all good things must come to an end eventually. And we had to return to Hanoi, back to our normal lives. Go ahead. Okay. I'm now standing here at the temple to Vietnamese general. Chung Chan Chan Dao. What's his name? Hong. What's his name? Chan Dao Ho? Chan Dao Ho. I'm sorry, I just moved the camera so much. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> We're here in Haolong Bay, as you can see behind me. You can't really see it. <laughs> as you can't see behind me. <laughs> but trust me, it's there. <laughs> Do you want me to swap it? Very, very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Halong Bay is known for its stunning features. As you can possibly see behind you me now. You can't see it. Andrew. There we go. I can see it on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> Running out of things to say now. <laughs>